What's going on YouTube? Today we're taking a look at a product from GLINet that I think is an absolute steal at $70. If you're interested in picking it up, check my links down below. I think everyone's got to pick one of these up. This is the latest Wi-Fi 6 AX3000 Wi-Fi router from GLINet. And that's a lot to say, but trust me, there's a lot more I'm going to tell you about this device. Now actually, before we continue, no, we're not talking about GI Joe. This is a device right, right behind this frame. And I like, I like this idea personally, guys. I think they did a nice job of kind of letting people hide their routers. Cause let's be honest, routers are generally not all that exciting to look at. And they don't actually fit a lot of people's decor. But with the GLI Net Marble, you can hide it behind the frame. You can also just mount it on the wall if you wanted to. And they give you a pretty cool stand. So there's a lot of ways that you can just kind of put this in your home office, your home and and get it out of the way. But the Marble device here is gonna allow you to mask your location thanks to having VPN capabilities. So if you wanted to work remotely and pretend you're somewhere else, you, you can do that with this device right here. It's a more stationary device than say one of their travel routers that I actually really, really like. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is kind of like a hybrid travel router, home router type of solution. The main takeaway from the Marble device right here is it's giving you a lot of functionalities like that VPN VPN capability, so you get a max of 190 megs down with WireGuard, which is super, super fast for multiple clients. And with OpenVPN, you'll get 30 megs down. So decent, decent. If you don't yet have a great VPN service, I'm also gonna put some links down there. NordVPN is gonna load, load up with this in absolutely no time. If you're looking for a WireGuard service as well, I'll throw one down there that's super fast. And we're gonna test out some speeds as well. Now I'm not using a VPN service. Wi-Fi 6 again is very fast. So on that five gigs channel, you're gonna get 2,402 megs down. On that 2.4 gig channel, you get about 574. So still very, very respectable. Some other things that you can do other than mask your location, you can use this in, in a drop-in gateway scenario. So all of your home clients that you have right now or your office clients will go through the gateway first, block those internet ads, or get, provide that VPN goodness, and then continue on their journey on their way to wherever they're going. You can also use this for parental controls. You can also use this, as I mentioned, as a repeater, as an extender, or maybe you wanna make it your own private Wi-Fi SSID. For example, if you're working from home, you don't, you don't really wanna mix and match your home clients with your work clients. This is a nice way to separate them from, well, let's just call it us. So you can do that in extender mode, or you can also use this in a repeater mode. So you don't need to connect any cables on the back. You can grab an existing Wi-Fi signal, put in the password that you already know, and then you can repeat it, maybe giving yourself a little bit more Wi-Fi access in the backyard, a little more Wi-Fi access in the further reaches of your home or anything like that. Another feature that they have on this is a dual WAN setup, and that's something I don't even have on my multi-hundred dollar gaming router. It's just something you don't see all that often these days. Let's be honest, guys, we don't really have a lot of situations where we have two incoming internet signals. If you do, you're already winning. This should be a device you pick up. But another really cool thing you can do, and I think this is really awesome because this is a situation that I actually have. If you have a Wi-Fi signal that you know the password to, let's call it your neighbor's Wi-Fi signal, you can connect the Marble device to their Wi-Fi connection. And then you can plug in your own ethernet cable, your own WAN connection to this, and you can use both of those situations to do that same load balance. So again, it's a nice mix and match feature. And if you just wanted to use this in repeater mode, and then we're gonna check out the settings, I promise. But if you just wanted to use this in repeater mode, again, grabbing an already existing Wi-Fi signal, you can change that WAN port into a LAN port. So you get three fully functional gigabit LAN ports on the back. Perfect for providing ethernet, internet access to older devices like a printer. Perfect for connecting maybe an old desktop computer that does not have a Wi-Fi card built in. Well, when you, when you change that WAN port to a LAN port, you get three ports that you can play with and do in that type of scenario. Now, before we check out the settings, a couple notes that I wanna mention because I think GLINet basically has a really awesome product here. <sighs> I would've liked to have seen USB-C personally, just like, just like what they have on the travel routers, I mean, this would be the perfect hybrid home gateway slash travel router when I'm out and about type of product. It's still slim enough. It's still flat, so it would be able to fit in a bag with no problem. You get four antennas built in versus the two on the travel router here. So if they only put USB-C, this would be the perfect product to kind of have as that 
multi-use situation because let's be honest most of us travel once or twice a year and and the other times this is probably just sitting in my bag but if i had a product like the marble i could use it at my home office and then when i travel i could just take it with me so glinet version 2 please put usb-c and i also would like a 2.5 gig port just like what's on the barrel here again if you're using this in, in your office if you're using this at your home that 2.5 gig port would be, be pretty beneficial these days, especially with a lot of newer devices having 2.5 gig ports. And yes, all of these little changes might add to a couple extra dollars, but I think it would have been worth it. The last critique that I have with the Marble device, if you have a lot of devices connected and you need a lot of range and speed, this is not for you guys. If you're in a, again, if you're in a studio apartment, you're in that dorm room, you're just using this in your home office to give you a little bit more speed or to give yourself a private network within your home network, this is absolutely awesome. As someone who has 60 devices and as someone who has a million block lists on my AdGuard Home instance on my server, this just couldn't keep up, to be quite honest with you guys. It kind of kind of stuttered. It stutters here and there. So GLINet, if you're listening, I know it only has a 1 gig processor, 512 RAM, 128 NAND RAM as well. Can you create a power user router, like a super duper power user router that has all the bells and whistles available to you guys, capable of up to 200 devices, capable of the most power hungry situations, power user hungry situations, something like that. I would be down for it. I would get rid of my gaming router in a heartbeat if that was able to do so, but I'm getting ahead of myself. It's only 70 bucks and it is really great for 70 bucks as that kind of drop in gateway mode as kind of that extender, repeater, anything like that. Let's check out the settings and we'll talk to you a little bit more about it. Taking a look at the splash screen of the GLINet Marble Router, type in 192.168.8.1 into your browser, and then you'll be able to pull up the splash screen. And as a side note, guys, I am starting another channel. It's called Jabber Plus. And I'm gonna go into more detail on how to connect the VPN service to this and how to connect that drop-in gateway to your home, home setup if you wanted to do that. So I'll leave a link down below to my secondary channel. Once again, it's called Jabber Plus. See you over there. But taking a look at the overall options page for the Marble router, here you'll be able to see exactly how you're connected to the internet. So right now I am connected via a cable and that's my primary source for the internet goodness. You can use repeater mode once again, and then you do have that second WAN port. So you'll see that right down here. And no matter how many options you have connected, you'll, you'll see which one is enabled just by the little light logo. So to start off this video, let me just show you how to set it up as a repeater mode, because I think a lot of people are going to use this to, once again, grab existing Wi-Fi and repeat it into their backyard, repeat it into their home office, or maybe even just to take this on a, on a trip, like I mentioned earlier on in the video. So taking a look at all of my available SSIDs, all you have to do is click on one, enter the password, and it's going to connect. I already do have a saved password, and yes, it does remember your saved logins, which is a huge, huge plus. So let's wait for this to connect and I'll just show you a couple more options as we're waiting for this to connect. As I mentioned, you can change that WAN connection to a LAN port and that's how you would do it. All you'd have to do is click change to LAN and then you can get rid of that WAN port and have three fully functional LAN ports to use. And here's that ethernet port, that WAN port two. So the same thing goes with that port. Just click on this option and you'll be able to do it. Now, as we've been talking about it, you can see that I am accessing my Wi-Fi network Medina on that five gigahertz channel, and I am connected to it. So if we go back to the splash screen here, you can see I have two, two ways that I am connected to the internet, ethernet one, repeater number two. And looking at these other options down here, guys, you can see if you have that ad guard ad blocker enabled you can see if you have IP version six enabled, you can see if your VPN is enabled and if you're using Tor for your private browsing goodness. And then you'll see all of your Wi-Fi networks right on the bottom here, which ones are enabled, your guest network and your main network, how many clients are connected via a wireless interface, and how many clients are connected via a LAN interface. So clicking on it, at one point, I did have quite a number of devices connected to this, but at the moment, I only have two devices connected. Here's my Pixel 8 Pro and my laptop that I'm talking to you guys on. You can see the interface. So one's via a cable, one's via Wi-Fi. And you can see the current speed, the up and down speed of both of those devices, how much total data they transmitted while being connected. And if you wanted to block them, you could quickly just block them from this interface right here. Now clicking on wireless tab, once again, very simple guys. Here's your five gig, your five gig Wi-Fi guest network. Same with your two gig and 2.4 gig guest Wi-Fi right down here. 
Now under your VPN tab, this is where you're going to see all of your VPN connections. So you can do open VPN and it's really simple with Nord. To show you how easily integrated NordVPN is to the router, all you have to do is enter in your credentials. Let's go ahead and do so. .com. I think that's my password. Click on save and continue. Let's choose a location. Click on New York. Click on apply. And that's basically it. I mean, it really is super, super simple, guys. So now that we're on NordVPN, go ahead and click on start and see what type of speeds we're going to get using OpenVPN. So again, it should only be about 30, 30 megs down. That's, that's going to be the maximum that you're going to get with OpenVPN. Let's go ahead and click start. And there we go. Pushing that 12 or pushing the limit right now. <laughs> pushing the limit. There we go. We're at about 12, 13. I'm not even going to let that finish. So you can see OpenVPN is kind of a dinosaur protocol at the moment. Let's go ahead and switch over to my WireGuard service and run the same speed test. It should be a lot faster. Again, maximum of 190 megs down. Now that we're connected, let's do a little bit of a refresh here. So you can see right off the bat, guys, WireGuard is definitely the way to go. And I've, I've generally been seeing about the 100, 120 range when it comes to my download speed. So more than respectable if you have a bunch of clients connected. You can see that 120 down, you'll be able to surf, you'll be able to stream, you'll be able to do what you guys need to do. And there's my upload, about 130. Let's see if that's going to finish any faster. Then we'll do one more speed test just for fun. So there we go, there are my speeds. Go ahead and do one more speed test, see if I can get a little bit faster. Again, WireGuard is definitely the way to go, guys. Really a nice, fast protocol. And you can see it's inching all the way up. We might get, there we go, 120, 130. Let's see if we hit that 130 mark. Yep, 130 down. So again, WireGuard is, is definitely the way to go. And let me just turn that off. And then I'm going to show you a, a baseline speed test. And I should be getting close to that 800 mark. Now, my current situation is using the marble as an access point. So I'm connected via a gigabit cable to my main router, which is connected to the marble device. And let's go back and go back to the Spectrum server, click on go, and hopefully it's about the 800 mark. Let's kind of see what we're going to get here. So yep, very rapidly going up to that 700, almost 800. And there's my upload speed about 140. So you can see with WireGuard, my upload speed basically remained the same and my download speed took a little bit of a hit. When you use a VPN service, that's always gonna be the case. You're always gonna get a little bit of a degradation when it comes to speed. Now VPN server, you can do the same thing when you're out and about. You can create your own VPN server that allows you to connect back to your home internet when you're out and about. So really nice guys, click setup now and you're good to go. Again, check out Java Plus where I'll go into more details on how to set this up. You do have Tor, so this is an open source kind of anonymous browsing type of situation scenario. There's a lot of plugins for you guys. It is an open WRT router, so there's a lot of plugins if you wanted to play with. You do have dynamic DNS. You do have Good Cloud, which is their own service for allowing you to connect back to the Marble router when you're out and kind of change some of these settings. So that's their good cloud service. Now here's AdGuard Home. This is a great way to block ads, guys. It's a really, really great way to block all of those ads. It gives you a lot of full control. Now I did mention earlier on, I've got about a million block lists and I'm not joking. This is actually on my server. So you can see here, this is my server that's running. And if we go to my block lists, you can see here I have one list that has 174 domains, 174,000. Another one has 173,000, 135,000, 200,000. You can see a whole bunch of different 40,000, 60,000, 374,000 domains, 239. And if we go back, there's a couple more here. So if you add all of these pages up, I have five pages of block lists. I'm blocking about a million sites. So again, this was not possible. Well, it is not possible on the on the marble device. So let's just click on enable and hopefully I can hopefully I can show you. I, I have to reset it because it's it's really not going to load it. Let's let's let this reload really quickly. Now let's go to the settings page. So 
So I just want to show you that I didn't even put all of those million block lists into this. I think I only put about 200,000, maybe 300,000 into it. And it just takes a really long time to start up. It doesn't even really start up, to be honest. It kind of just hangs and makes the device unusable. Now I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to redo it once I reset it, just to show you the, the couple options that you have there. Now that I've reset AdGuard Home, guys, I mean, let's go ahead and show you the settings here. Let's go ahead and click on this one. So I like that AdGuard Home is going to handle all of my client requests. Sometimes like your Chromecast or other devices have their own DNS settings. This is going to override that and have all of your devices connect through your AdGuard Home. So if we go to the settings page, you can see with basically no modifications, I just had to reset the Marvel device. This is everything that you're going to see right now. And if we go back to that filtered block list, you can add different block lists. And again, guys, I don't want this to seem like this is not a capable AdGuard home instance. If you add from any of these or add most of these to the block list, you're going to be just fine. Again, when you get into those 200 or 300 block list domains, it, it, it takes a little bit of a toll and this device just can't handle it. But it's pretty fine if you just wanted to add some of these. It's going to do a great job of blocking those ads for you. So you're going to be just fine. Average user, you are going to be just fine. Now let's go back to speed test. And I'll just show you that all of these ads that were around here, they're gone. You do not see these ads anymore. Now, if we go to an ad block test, just for fun, guys, just want to show you the ad block test with only a few lists selected. I am blocking about 97%. So I think I'm doing a really good job when it comes to blocking ads. So AdGuard Home built in is something that I actually really, really enjoy. One of the great features of these GLN products for sure. Now going into a couple other settings, of course you have a firewall, you can port forward, you can open ports on the router. You can have your DMZ host that allows unlimited access, unregistered, unfiltered access to the internet. Perfect for maybe your PlayStation or something like that. You also do have that multi-WAN setting, which again, I think is really awesome. So you, you can enable it right over here in Ethernet 1 repeater, which is that Wi-Fi section and the Ethernet 2 right there. So here's your failover. If one fails, it's going to revert to the other one. And you can change the order depending on the priority of each one of these connections. Now, load balance is basically going to use multiple internet connections coming in and kind of spread the love, if you will, amongst all of those connections, kind of giving a more, a more streamlined or even a more well-balanced connection. That's probably what I should call it, just a more well-balanced connection. You also do have LAN settings. You just have your guest network settings. There's a DNS setting. Here's your network mode, router, access point, extender, WDS. You also have IP version 6 available on this router as well. Now, your MAC address is pretty cool, guys. This comes in handy in certain situations where you might have to clone. You might have to clone a MAC address for some other type of hardware that you might have. For example, if you're only able to connect to the Internet using one specific MAC address, maybe it's your work laptop or anything like that, you can mask the MAC address of the Marvel device to pretend that it's that device that should be getting that internet access. Again, really cool feature if that's something that you need. Or again, I've been in situations where I'm only allowed one wireless connection at a hotel, plugging in that MAC address that I registered with the hotel, like from my cell phone into the Marvel will let me spread the love and connect as many devices as I want. MAC address comes in handy when it does, not handy when it doesn't. Here's your drop-in gateway mode once again. Perfect if you wanted to block all the ads on your entire network. Connect this to your home network. Do cut some of these settings and all of your devices or some devices will have access to that ad block feature or that VPN feature. Now, really, that's all I want to go over in this video, guys. I think there's a lot to love about the GLINet Marvel device. Again, there's a couple shortcomings, but at this price point, I can't really knock it all that much. It's not something that I can do. It's just a it's just a really cool device that has so many different features. This is kind of like the Swiss Army knife of routers. It just lets you do a lot of things that a lot of other routers at higher price points don't. And if you don't mind carrying around the power cord, this could also be your travel router when you go and do your different things. Now, let me just see why my time zone. Let's go ahead and fix that time zone really quick to get rid of that little asterisk. So let me know if you have any questions about it. Again, I'm going to do a deep dive into these settings on my other channel. But if you're interested in it, definitely check out my link. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you in another video.